What's up, summoners? King Blair here. One of the most important parts of Epic 7 RTA is actually getting a really good draft set up so that you're able to get a lot of dubs. So what we're going to be doing today for Top 5 Tuesday is covering the top 5 best and most common first pick units in a draft. Since first pick is one of the most important parts of RTA because it essentially sets the pace for the game and it most likely sets what your opponent will be picking and what you yourself will have access to. So if you like the video, make sure you like subscribe and join the Discord server link in the description without further ado let's get right into it now i do have to say that with first pick there is while these are very common and very popular and also very good and i'll be going why they're so good and some of the team compositions that go along with them this does not mean that they are the only ones there are a lot of different first picks that people do i've seen a very wide range i've seen people first pick assassin sid and have incredibly good uh results all the way up in legend basically so it's definitely something that you get to pick on your own but these are just the most standard and common and they are the best because they're so good at setting up the rest of your draft so with that let's get right into it starting of course as always with the honorable mentions and then of course we will go with the rest of how you would actually pick the units in the draft so you can get some information out of this besides just all oh, these are just really common so first with the honorable mentions first we have none other than arbitral builder for an honorable mention now the reason he's here is not only because he's still very popular lower down in lower brackets but it's also because you still see him picked first pick very often the reason being Usually the opponent will prevent a fallen Cecilia, which means that you lose access to really good barriers. And first picking Arbiter Villager against any team that doesn't have really thick barriers, Arbiter Villager is going to be doing a pretty good job, especially if you're trying to go cleave or aggro, which usually those are teams that have very aggressive picks to them, that have a, a way to guarantee themselves turn one and can actually make sure that the RB does a ton of damage, right? So usually that will be followed by things like... Um, Pavel core with Pavel Sidom and something else to actually be able to cleave or they'll be followed with a more aggro team with Maid Chloe and with uh, something like Strasse, Emilia to be able to push up the Arbiter Builder, do the damage and also do a lot of damage to the opponent. So you still do see him a lot, especially when Fallen Cecilia is banned. So if Fallen Cecilia is banned, just know there's a really good chance you're going to see an Arbiter Builder first pick. Then we have none other than Violet first pick in the honorable mentions. The reason I put him here is because I saw this so many times, and I could also put Rem here, and it's the same reason why they're both here. People hate dealing with RNG, and the best way to deal with RNG is to take away the RNG for yourself, right? So you do occasionally see people doing this. I actually did it myself, and it felt disgustingly good uh, for some really odd reason. It can be punished but with things like Stena and Landy, but if you pick the Violet, and then you get the rem later and then it's just you have a really really good start right but granted you do have to draft a certain way and you have to be able to pivot and have a lot of units to actually adapt to your opponent's counters because you can bet they're going to be picking the maid the stanit and the landy to counter your buildred first pick right so again that one is one you do also will see because people hate dealing with rng and last but definitely not least it's going to be specter tenebria this unit still gets first picked a lot and the reason is because she's also a very versatile unit first pick is usually a situation where you don't want to reveal too much about your draft and you want to still be open to different um drafting right if you want to do bruiser and be more tanky or if you want to just go full aggro full attack and just blow the opponent up you still have to make that decision but if you first pick Spectre tenebria she fits perfectly into both the team compositions and the opponent has to have a response for her if they don't pick a response to Spectre tenebria it's usually a win right there's usually not a lot an opponent can do if they don't actually stop Spectre tenebria or ban her out because if they have no way to reach her and you have a good Spectre tenebria she's just going to slowly destroy the enemy team right so still a very solid option especially if you have a very strong Spectre tenebria but just know that you do lose access to a lot of the supports that they can take away the priority for the supports as well as potentially cleave you and you'll have to be able to answer to all of that but with that out of the way with honorable mentions let's look now at the top five starting with number five who's going to be none other than amelia who's a new unit who it just seems to continue to just become more and stronger and stronger and will continue to become stronger and stronger as the game goes on so amelia why is she first picked so often well because you're guaranteeing yourself an attack buff support with her s2 being able to push up an attack buff as well as an s3 to be able to heal the rest of your party the other thing is that in a bruiser fight having this attack buff and cycling is invaluable and the opponent won't be able to do too much and lastly of course is it also leaves your draft options open right and again a lot of these common it's going to be that you can 
go different ways because you don't want your opponent knowing right away what you're going for, right? If I pick something like a Politi's first pick, I'm basically telegraphing my opponent that I'm going uh, aggro, right? But Amila doesn't necessarily do that because you can either still go really tanky with Brucers or you can go with really aggro teams picking Strasse to be able to push up or something like an LQC if they pick something like Fallen Cecilia, right? And you're able to cycle those units with us too and be very aggressive with Amelia and still be able to burst down enemies so they can't be safe and if they get outsped, they are going to be taking tons of damage or you can decide to tank up a little bit more, pick a Crawl, pick a... Our, our Charlotte, who's a little bit tankier of a damage dealer, who's going to be there for a lot longer, and then just Brewster your opponent out. And then that Brewster versus Brewster, Emilia does offer a ton of support. So not only are you taking away a, a unit that a lot of people are going to have, because a lot of people are going to have Emilia, but you're also giving yourself the versatility that you need to switch between drafts, as well as giving you a really great support and really good unit that the opponent won't be getting. Now, for the next one, we have none other than landy so for landy it's a unit that's in the banner right now if you're a new player if you're an old player if you're a player playing epic 7 you need to pull for this unit she's arguably one of the best units in this game both in pvp and in pve but that aside let's actually talk about why she's so commonly first pick and she's actually my personal first pick the big reason why she's first pick is because she counters so many things in the meta all the type Brewster and tanks, she does extremely well against, as well as it steals the opponent uh, opponent's picks. As we know, Maid Chloe is a major threat in today's day and age. And if you first pick the Landy, if they do end up picking the Maid, that means they're picking a unit that is getting countered by the Landy, which gives you a lot more flexibility in your actual draft to actually counter whatever your opponent's gonna throw your way, as well as giving you one of the best DPS units in the game, right? The other thing is that if they don't take the Maid Chloe, then you have access to Maid Landy. And unless they're blowing your Landy up several times, they are not going to be able to deal with how much damage she pumps out, as well as the utility she provides with the speed buff. Making Landy an incredibly nice first pick to have, and one of my personal favorites, especially because I don't own Maid Chloe, and Maid Chloe doesn't have as many counters. It gives me a really solid option for when my opponent does decide to go Maid Chloe into my Landy. One thing to watch out for, and something that you're going to try to get afterwards, is she does need some support to be able to shine. So after your opponent picks, if they end up picking the maid or the amelia you want to try to pick the other unit whether that's the maid or the amelia depending which one was lost if not deanne also works very well but she can also work without attack buff although won't she won't shine as good depending on the build that you have the other thing about landy is that if you're an aggressive player you can also just switch to a full aggressive comp with something like a general purgus with amelia uh, cleave or just straight up go cleave right she does a lot of really good damage and if you have the proper setup for her you can actually end up cleaving with her so again very versatile first pick a lot of different options you can do and counters a lot of the opponent's uh, potential options with tanking and just getting to beat through them one thing to watch out for is that you are if you are picking landy very early on you will have to watch out for charlotte because charlotte will very likely be picked against you and if not charlotte a carrot right so you do have to watch out for those units getting picked against you because there's a very good chance they're going to be picked and you just have to deal with them right so just know that that is going to be the case uh for amelia i didn't mention but amelia you need to watch out for polites because they usually do tend to pick polites into amelia or we'll try to cleave her especially because she's not that good into cleave i forgot to mention that for amelia but now let's move on to the number three Another very, very common first pick type unit, and that is going to be none other than Maid Chloe. I personally don't like this one as much. Granted, I don't have a Maid Chloe, so I don't know how good it would be, but it is a very common and very strong first pick. The reason being, you're securing yourself the arguably the best unit in the game, right? Uh, for the most part, Maid Chloe has very little counters, and the ones she has aren't necessarily hard counters you're still able to get a lot of utility out of her and the stun just cheats out games if you stun the opponent's dps and they have no way to cleanse it it's just like it almost feels like cheating right it just feels like i just get a free stun and you just win off of that right because they lose a full turn from a support that's also going to be healing and giving you sustain and giving you attack buff and revive the reason why she's such a common first pick is again because of how powerful she is if you don't grab her there's a very high chance your opponent will right and if they grab her and you don't have something like a landy you're not going to be able to blow through all the mitigation or not a mitigation the attack buff and the revive that she's going to be putting as well as the high amount of healing she's going to be doing the other thing is that may chloe actually has a pretty decent matchup into cleave whereas landy and amelia nest don't right so that's one thing to know for mate chloe is her matchup into cleave is actually not that bad because you can actually make her extremely bulky with water's origin to the point where they can't reliably one shot her she can come back and just undo everything that a cleave player did right 
So that alone makes you a really good first pick and safe choice because the only thing they can really do is try to Brewster you and if they try to cleave you, you're already preparing yourself for that anti-cleave, right? So again, it's a very, very solid option. It again doesn't lock you into a play style. You're still able to cleave. You're still able to Brewster. You're still able to aggro, right? You're still able to do pretty much almost every play style, including even control if you have the right units for control because then they're just not going to be able to sustain against you, right? So again, very, very good option and very good into all different play, uh, enemies the one thing you do have to watch out for first pick me chloe is that there is a 99 percent chance that the opponent will pick landy into you which means you have to deal with the landy blowing you up because you're gonna have so many buffs that is arguably her biggest counter and of course also ml haste later in draft if they also want to punish the chloe pick although if you just end up going with a more brewster draft the ml haste usually is not too bad of a problem since you're not going to be dying that often anyway and you're mostly using her there for the attack buff so make Chloe, incredibly, incredibly good unit to first pick. And now we move on to the number two. We have none other than Fallen Cecilia, who again is another one that's a little weird, but it makes sense when you do think about it. So Fallen Cecilia, why is she such a popular first pick? One of the big reasons is going to be this barrier and this barrier alone, right? If it was not for this initial barrier that Assisi puts out at the beginning of the game, she would not see nearly as much play as she does right now. But the big thing that this is doing is mitigating a lot of early game burst that a lot of cleavers can't actually properly deal with, even to this day with all the tools that they have. A Fallen Cecilia first pick really does do pretty decent into cleave, although you do have to watch out for the Operator Secret uh, matchup. The other thing is that if you control Fallen Cecilia, that means later on in the draft, you can threaten a Fairy Tail Tenebria, which is usually just a force ban, right? So if you have Fallen Cecilia, the opponent is very unlikely to actually pull put uh, fairy tilt tenebria into you because this barrier with immunity buff will stop a fairy tilt tenebria in its tracks meaning that they picking a fairy tilt tenebria could be really dangerous for them whereas for you if you pick it there is essentially no real way if you pick her last for the opponent to deal with her which will just force the opponent to ban her out right so that interaction alone with term fairy tale tenebria in the draft and just being able to pressure that is enough to make her just an incredibly powerful first pick as well as just giving you also the opportunity to pivot because a lot of the times people have in their minds that fallen cecilia is a defensive unit that she's a brewster but that's what a lot of people want you to think and you will run a lot into a pivot cleave uh and if you're wondering where pivot cleave is it's basically a team that looks like they're going brewster but then immediately switches to a hyper aggressive strategy and then you're not able to keep up because they take turn one and just blow up your units and fallen cecilia is the best unit for those type of teams why her s3 still does incredibly good damage you give initial bulk to the cleave team that normally would be extremely squishy and you also get skill modifier allowing that cleave team that if they don't get that initial first uh, complete stomp they're able to follow up afterwards, right? So that that just makes her such a cohesive unit because not only are you able to catch opponents off guard with the pivot cleave and just absolutely obliterate them before they get the chance, not only do you threaten a fairy tale tenebra control draft, but you also are stopping someone from cleaving you unless they have operator cigarette, which can also threaten you. Although a lot of times if you're just banner, then they they kind of lose because they don't have the damage, right? And then you just get a really solid night on your side so that is what makes Holland cecilia such an incredibly good first pick and one of the most common i would actually say she's the most common uh, i don't know about best because she is susceptible to getting uh, operator cigarette as well as if people know really well how to deal with a pivot cleave you will be in trouble right and of course you're also giving up landy made chloe which is another thing that you have to do watch out for so that's a big thing with fallen cecilia and that's something that you will have to watch out for is they are very likely to retaliate with something like made chloe and landy both tanky units, both can do a lot of damage. Some form of anti-cleaving if it's a proof of valor landing. But now we move on to the number one. This unit higher up is just a menace. But if this unit is not pre-ban, she is getting first pick. And that is going to be none other than Angel of Light Angelica. She does everything that a first pick needs to do and has none of the weaknesses that any of the first picks have why is that well she has good matchups into pretty much everything in the game and she can also pivot into any playstyle. if you're cleaving she's a mage that brings books that can also strip buffs so that the opponent can't tank up also silence so there's less retaliation if 
you want to go control. She has an incredibly good control skill by stripping and applying this and then following up with some silences to make sure that they're never able to cleanse. If you're playing Bruiser, you're able to take away so much advantage from the opponent as well as give yourself skill nullifier. If you're anti-cleaving, she's an incredibly good anti-cleave because if they AOE you, you get a free skill nullifier as well as a cleanse, right? And if you're anti-controlling, she gives a cleanse if they do an AOE attack. So she basically does everything in this game right for a first pick she is just the most flexible most uh honestly one of the most broken units in this game which is why you will almost never see her which is why she's not common because she's almost always banned that's the only reason you don't see her all the time but it, whenever she's on ban i every time i decide to not ban her she gets picked and it's every single time it's just as hard because i have no clue what my opponent's going they can perfectly transition into going into a different team now if you're the angel angelica player that also does mean that you have to have a lot of units built so if you're actually using angel of light angelica i mean you can always go with your own choice but you do have to watch out for again Polites and Acid. Those are the probably the two ones that they're going to pick most commonly against you which means you can also bait them because you can just have a support one right but Politi's being a really really solid option into angel light angelica because she does punish this kill quite well as well as the cr pushing right but aside from that no true real counter aside from angelic Montmorency. but if they're going angelic Montmorency and then you will have a cleave because she's on book then they're gonna lose because then they're just getting blown up right or you can just stat check them with effectiveness if you have more effectiveness than they have efforts right so it's it's she's arguably the best first pick in the game you can literally pretty much pick almost anything if you want to go the cleave route you would go for a pavel type cleave or for strasse depending on what you would prefer if you're going for the bruiser you would go something like make chloe afterwards and then some sustaining units that can also do some damage because she doesn't bring damage on her own so you will need to bring some damage and if you are going uh aggro again made chloe is a really good option Amelia is a really good option or if you're going to control a Tywin, probably her best pair up, although that does leave you really susceptible to getting champ seed and a Momo, so you want to hide the a Tywin for as long as possible. And that's usually control strats, uh, because you have to watch out for him. But a lot of times, you will see her with Spectre Teneria as well, to be able to blow up units. You'll see her with LQC, to be able to blow up dark units that they may pick, especially because they will pick a Robbie into you, and Stanet to be able to deal with the Violets, they'll try to pick into you. But again, you just have so much flexibility with your draft whenever you pick Angel Light Angelica, which is why she's the best first pick unit. But that is going to be all I have for you guys today. Hopefully it was informational and it helped you guys a little bit to understand some of the team co compositions behind first picks and why they're so good. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you guys today and I will see you next time. Peace.